Once upon a time, a junk man had a dream. I want to build a spaceship, go to the moon, salvage all the junk that's up there, bring it back, sell it. So he put together a team, an ex-astronaut, a fuel expert. They built a rocket ship, and they went to the moon. Who knows what they'll do next? Show a little class, okay? So this is how the other half lives, huh? Sir, thank you very much. Now fifteen hundred, one thousand fifteen, thank you, sir. Who was this Malcolm guy anyway? Art dealer. Got himself the Picasso franchise back in the twenties and made a fortune. So why the auction? Well, Malcolm died recently and left everything to charity. So they're converting cars and cannons to cash. Cars and cannons to cash. Did Harry actually say that? Sure. Harry Broderick, the bard of the junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Broderick, the jettison salvage. Here you are. Can I have one? You can use his. Well, I always kind of like to use my own. What's your name? Lila. Mercy. Who are you going to sell it to? Egypt or Israel? Mel, why do I keep telling you about the salvage business? You have to use your imagination. Imagination? Now, to start with, this thing has about 12 miles of hydraulic tubing inside. Thick tube made from solid copper. What do we know about copper? It's expensive. Very expensive. We could probably recoup our entire investment from the copper alone. What else do we know about? Well, that's a 75 millimeter cannon. Gun collectors would pay good money for a piece like that. That's right. But it's also obvious. Oh. Yep. What would you do with the body? Sell it for scrap? Mel. That's three inches of solid, bulletproof steel. You take that, and you mount it on a heavy-duty Ford chassis. Of course, an armored car, right? Brinks would pay top dollar for a custom deal like that. And the tank's engine delivers a lot of low-speed torque and can run in a sandstorm. So, it'd make a perfect power plant for a, a desert oil rig. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> and these treads? Could they come apart in separate pieces? Do you know what I'd do with them? I'd sell them to a machine shop. They would make fantastic shock mounts for heavy power tools. Oh, Mel, Mel, just a little more time. Just a little more time. You've got the instincts. You're going to make a wonderful junk man. You really think so? Yeah. 
That's why we're here. You're going to bet on her? You bet. So help me, Harry. You sell this for parts, and I'll punch your heart out. Well, we junk men also have to have soul. I've dreamed of owning one of these ever since I was a kid, and this is my first chance. She sure is pretty. Hey, when did Malcolm die? A couple weeks ago. Why? Well, the car was shipped over from Malta and just arrived this week. Malcolm probably never even had a chance to see her. I bet you're right. If he had, he probably wouldn't have died. <laughs> <laughs> Such a rich color. Mm. Yes. Suppose that's nickel? It's aluminum. Oh. The rubber's in great shape. Sure is. The next one. Lot number 22, ladies and gentlemen, is a very fine piece. It's an American Gatling gun. It's in excellent original condition, circa 1875. Mounted on its oh. original case on. All right, oh. how much? Oh. Is that? It's beautiful. It'd be fun to see what it'd do on the track, huh? Oh. You see, now there's no soul. Mm -hmm. That's an automobile. That's not a guided missile. You got soul, Harry. It's got no flair. <laughs> Who are the new kids? Never saw them before. Good looking group, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of the sale today is lot number 37. It's a 1937 Type 57 Bugatti Vento Coupe. And there's no reserve, no minimum on this car today. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of expediting the auction today, I suggest that we begin the bidding on this magnificent automobile at $50,000. Full say $50,000 to start. 50, thank you very much, sir. Now 55. I have 50 to 55, thank you, sir. Now 60. I have 55, 60, thank you very much. Now 65. 60 is bid to a year, 65, thank you very much. Now 70, sir. 65 is bid to a year, 70. Six, 70, thank you, sir. Now 75, 70 is bid. 75 to you, sir. 70, thank you so much. 75 is bid, now 80,000, sir. 80, thank you very much, 80,000. I have $80,000 bid. Do I hear 85? We'll say 85,000. Excuse me, sir. Do we have to nickel and dime this thing, or can we get right down to case? Well, make your play, sir. $100,000. <coughs> I have $100,000 bid on the Bugatti. $100,000. Any advance? $100,000. Once, twice, sold to that gentleman. Number 42, and congratulations. Thank you very much. $100,000? Drives like a dream. For $100,000, it better. <laughs> Harry, you know it's not worth that much. It is to me. Mac's gonna bring the flatbed. I can stay here and help him if you want to go on back. No, we'll stick around in case you need some extra manpower. Sure. Boy, they don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> Look now, we got company. Uh, Mr. Broderick. Sir. Casper Beckman. I must compliment you on your expertise in auction psychology. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shake you up like that. No, 
All's fair. All's fair. I, I admire a worthy adversary. Nice to have met you. Oh, this isn't a social call, sir. I came to, uh, buy the car. Well, it isn't for sale. Mr. Broderick, everything is for sale. Would you accept an offer of two million dollars? Sure. But you aren't offering that. You're just fishing. I figure you'd, uh, go the craziest, uh, quarter million tops. Marvelous, uh, marvelous. Uh, you, you are a man to be reckoned with. Well, uh, if you'll excuse us, we really have quite a bit to do. Well, then I, I shan't keep you, except to say that I am prepared to make an offer of $120,000 in cash. Pass. But don't be too hasty, sir. That is an immediate profit of $20,000 for you. OK, I'll think about it. Very well. Think about it. Thank you. Thank God. Let's stay in touch. All right. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you. Thank you, friends. <clears throat> you just turned down a beautiful profit. That's not like you, Harry. How do you put a price on a dream? Something's fishy here, Harry. What are you talking about? Who's this Beckman, anyway? An antique dealer. Why is he so anxious to overpay on this car? It's not an antique, not yet. Maybe he has a dream just like Harry. No. I don't think he wants the car. I think maybe he wants something that's in it. What makes you say that? Evidence. What evidence? The car came in from Malta, right? And the owner died before it got here. So? So if maybe something was put in the car in Malta, nobody got a chance to take it out. Did you see that Weasley guy with him? He couldn't keep his hands off the car. He was looking for something. You know what I think? What? I think you've been seeing too many old movies. I know, Wilbur. I'm way ahead of you. We can't get it one way, we'll get it another. And, uh, you can handle it, Wilbur. Do whatever is necessary. Can I help you?
Hartman, he's not getting my car! He wasn't trying to steal the car. What do you think he was trying to do with it? Harry, you don't need a set of metric wrenches and a power drill to steal a car. Face it, Harry, there is something hidden in this car. Will you get off that? There is something hidden in it, and we ought to search it. He's right. Oh, come on. Oh, relax, Harry. We're not going to take the car apart. We're just going to give it a very careful going over. That's all. Don't mark the car. We're not going to hurt the car. See? There's nothing in there. Kid, we haven't even started to search it yet. What are you getting at? We're gonna have to take it apart. Take her apart? You're not talking about a pickup truck here. There's no other way, Harry. We're gonna have to go in. Every piece of this lady's hand-fitted. She's put together like a violin. You start to take her apart. We built a spaceship. Now we're in real trouble if we can't disassemble an Italian car. Harry, you're stalling. St you better know I'm stalling. Take her apart. I want to know a lot more about Bakeman before I violate this lady. Go see a friend of mine. Who? Max Jacoby. He knows every antique dealer in the business. You coming? No. Nope. We got a few things to do here yet. Coming. Harry, I haven't seen you since the duel of that. That's right. The what? It's the two-tailed dinosaur. We were salvaging an old building and then came across some bones. Yeah, he brought it in a couple of years ago. Bet it was an old cow. Cow. You don't put that kind of effort into a cow. Had a full crew, took a couple of weeks. What was it? Cow. <laughs> What'd you bring me this time? Do you know an antiquarian named Caspar Beckman? Yes. He's a specialist on the 16th century. Matter of fact, Ah. Yep. This is his last published work. The Legacy of Charles V by Caspar Beckman. Came out in 1950. Yeah. Shortly before he lost his position at the University of Madrid. What happened? Terrible scandal involving a missing statuette of immense value. And? They never prosecuted. I see. And then in 1965, Interpol was looking for him in Istanbul. What's he up to now? Oh, he deals in uh, priceless objects, very exclusive. Very shady, I'll bet. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. If you stole the Mona Lisa, Caspar Beckman would find you a buyer. I see. Uh, why would he be interested in a 1937 Type 57 Bugatti? Well, I really wouldn't know. I mean, it's a uh, valuable automobile, but not that valuable. But if Caspar Beckman wants something, you can bet there's big money involved. Maybe there's something hidden in the car. Well, there's a novel idea. Start with the engine, right? Now, let's wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's think about what we're doing. OK, Harry, we got this slimy guy who's really interested in this car. And who's notorious for the traffic of precious objects. And this car just entered the country from Malta. I know. Shipped by a man who died before it even arrived. Now, who knows what's in here? Could be the Sultan's dagger. OK, start with the engine. <laughs> 
Wait a minute. It has to be done. I'm the one to do it. decision. We can put it back together. It's too late. It would never be the same. And all for nothing. Why don't we try x-rays? Forget it, Mel. Forget it? We just took a work of art and turned it into a piece of junk. Carrie, we can't give up now. Why don't we at least try the x-rays? Get the x-ray machine. No use. Check the drive shaft, Mel. No. Why not? Because if it's not in the drive shaft, it's not in the car. <sighs> Try the drive shaft. Wait a minute, back up. Okay, go slow. What is it? I don't know. Whatever it is doesn't belong there. Ah. <laughs> what do you think? Any jewels? Maybe it's the Sultan's dagger, huh? <laughs> What is that? What is it? Looks like old parchment to me. I think it's a map. This could be Mexico. That could be California. It's a treasure map. Well, it's obviously a map, but what makes you think that it's a treasure map? X marks the spot. What else could it be? It could be a lot of things. It could be an old mission or a fort. Old, all right. Make out the date, 1543, but the, the letters, what is that? Is that an F? No, no, that's a G. S. That's the way they used to make them in the old days, you know, like in Congress, United States. Now, that, 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 that. It's a T. T. Tefta, tefta. El Testamente del Duque de Castilla. Testament of the Duke of Castile? A will? Yeah, of course it is. One of those old Spanish conquistadors. They were all over here in the 16th century. They were all looking for one thing. Gold. Yeah. Gold! Hold it! Even if there is gold there, how are we gonna find it? What do you mean, how are we gonna find it? We've got the map. That's not a map. That's a drawing. Look, there are no borders. There aren't any longitude lines, no latitude lines. That could be anywhere. We'll find it. Wherever it is, this map will lead us to the treasure. Harry, how do you know that? Because Beckman wants it. That map's genuine. There's a pot of Aztec gold under that little X. How can you be sure about that? You don't know who the Duke of Castile was in 1543? No. The greatest conquistador of them all, Hernando Cortez. This is his will? He drew up this map so his descendants could collect the treasure, but they never did because the map's been missing for centuries. How do you know it's real? Simple. I'll run a chemical test. Sixteenth century Spanish parchment is extremely resinous, and if this is genuine, we should get a 
Blue precipitate. Blue's my lucky color. Since when? Today. <laughs> All right. Now let's find out exactly where that X is. It's in a canyon with a rock formation that looks like a falcon. See, the treasure is 200 feet due northeast of the vertical projection of the falcon's beak. How are we going to find the canyon? There aren't any latitude or longitude lines. There's got to be some way to find it from this map. Keep work. I'll get rid of our friend. Yeah? Will you open the gate, please? I'm sorry, we're closed. You are... You are inhospitable, Mr. Broderick. No, 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 just closed. I, I come to you with a lucrative proposition, and you would have me talk to you through a fence? Why don't you just pick the lock like your dim-witted friend? Oh, sir, I, I took you for a gentleman. This is most ungracious. Oh, I don't mean to be ungracious. Huh? So let's get right down to cases. How much for the map? $60,000. You offered 120000 at the auction. Ah, uh, yes, but this time you get to keep the vehicle. I'm sorry, the Bugatti is now a pile of junk. Oh, sir, my final offer is $150,000 for the map, and you can keep the Bugatti. Nice chatting with you, Mr. Beckman. This is coin of the realm, sir. I caution you against a grave error of judgment. Yeah, grave errors often mean the difference between success and failure, don't they? Well, sir, when you realize the folly of your decision, I can be reached at, uh... I've got your number. I will point out that you will never find the treasure without me. Good day. You see those two decorations we thought were for male and female? Yeah. yeah, well, that's just what they mean today. Back then, they were the astrological signs for Mars and Venus. Hey, see that? That's the constellation Orion. And with these celestial coordinates, we can figure out the exact longitude and latitude of that canyon. How about that? All right, <laughs> you got it. Oh, you did it. <laughs> OK, now multiply the reciprocal of the last angle. Got it. Longitude, 117 degrees. 117. 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Flat. 35 degrees. 35 degrees. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. It's near Palmdale. Palmdale. Near Palmdale. Okay, Right there, that's it. Let's go get it. We got a big problem. What? Our Aztec gold is right in the middle of U.S. government property. Oh, no. Right in the middle of the Fort Gunderson military reservation. It's a class three base, too. Closed perimeter, sentries, whole routine. How are we going to get in there? Well, think of something. Me? You're supposed to be the big whoopee leader. You think of something. We could get 20 years in Leavenworth for this. Why? These are our own uniforms. Now, what bothers me is the gold being on government land. That gold was put there before it became government land. It's fair salvage. Look sharp, we're here. Good morning, sir. May I help you, sir? Good morning, Colonel Broderick, to tour the base. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but you're not listed. 
Well, we wouldn't be, Corporal. We're here on an inter-service coordination inspection. The Secretary of Defense asks us to make an outside report. I'm Lieutenant Commander Carmichael. I represent the Navy. Is that Skip Carmichael, the astronaut? That's right, son. Well, then you must be Harry Broderick. I didn't know you were in the service. Air Force Reserve. Then you must be Melanie Slozar. Monohydrazine. Hydrazine. That's right. How'd you know about that? Are you kidding? That's all we ever talk about back in the barracks. <laughs> we appreciate it, son. Well, I'll be sure to let General Edwards know you're here at once. Uh, uh son, I, I, I wish you would. All they'll do is make a big fuss, give us the VIP treatment. We'll never get our work done. I don't know, sir. You know, I'm supposed to report any unscheduled entries. I realize that. All we want to do is look around. We don't want to shake anything up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, sir. I understand, sir. Thank you, Corporal Rogers. I'll, uh, I'll mention your cooperation in my report. Well, thank you very much, sir. up that hill. Harry. It's okay. If they were firing, there'd be a red flag. You sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. Go ahead. Anything? Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think there it is. Let me see the map. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> All there right. it is. Right where it says it is on the map. Fantastic. Let's go get the good. Let's go. Range, 3,000 meters. Two, delay. Okay, Skip, mark off 200 feet. Right. From base stake, left, 1-5 mils. One round per tube for registration. It's got to be right in behind there, somewhere. OK. OK, let's get these bushes out of here. Right. Here you go. Fire! Red flag, huh? Let's get out of here. Yeah. 
Registration complete. Fire for effect. Let's get out of here. Harry, look! It's gotta be the treasure cave. Let's get in there! Yeah! Okay. Yes, sir, we're on our way. All right, let's get these babies rolling. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Hope we can get everything in the Jeep. Here. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. It's gone. Beat us to it. Right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, where's that paddle? HC. And then the court's head. I know I've touched that in over a century. If there ever was a treasure, taken out of here a long time ago. Patrol the base. We got him. Are you all right, Colonel Broderick? Oh, we're fine, son. We're fine. When General Everts found out you were caught in the middle of an artillery barrage, he almost went through the roof. He didn't even know you were on the base. Oh, it's probably as much our fault as anybody else's. We should have stuck to the road. Yes, sir, but I hate to think what they'd have done to us if anything had happened to you. Well, we're fine now. We'll be happy to uh, escort you back to the officers' club, sir. Uh, General Albert says he'll pick up the tab. Oh, thanks the general for me, Sergeant. But we uh, we have enough for our report. We'll be on our way. As you wish, sir. I'm sorry, Harry. I pushed this thing from the very beginning. Hadn't been for me, your Bugatti would still be in one piece. Beckman's no clown. What do you mean? He told me I'd never find the treasure. You mean it's hidden somewhere else? I mean, I think we had it all the time. What are you talking about? The map. I think that piece of paper right by itself is worth an awful lot of money. Step on it, Skip. 
We got one stop to make, and then we'll call it back. <laughs> Mr. Baker, yeah. please sit down. Over, please come in. You remember our Miss Lozar from the auction? Oh, and may I, I compliment you on your reading matter? Uh -huh. <laughs> may I autograph it for you? Would you mind? Doesn't Just to, uh, to Harry, best wishes, then. and then we'll talk business. Directly to the point, as usual. Eh? Hey, uh, yeah. I hear that you had an interesting foray into the desert. Oh, nothing extraordinary. Did I not tell you that without my special knowledge, you would never find the treasure? Hmm. Well, then let's quit waltzing around. Now, are you ready to buy the map? Indeed, I am. Then let's discuss money. The $150,000 offer that I made to you stands. I'm afraid that's ancient history, my friend. The price is now $200,000. Take it or leave it. Upon my word, Harry Brodrick, you old devil. <laughs> you have mentioned the precise sum that I have here in this case. You mean we have a deal? Yes. If and only if the map is genuine. Oh, it's genuine, all right. We've had it authenticated. Then certainly you can have no objection if we perform our own authentication. Be our guest. The parchment is undamaged, I trust. Oh, you may count on it. Ah, here is the... Money, to make out that. Oh. You'll count it, huh? <laughs> Mr. Beck. Yes? One thing I'd like to know. Where's the gold? Oh, well, the business transaction is completed. I have no further need for pretense. There's no gold. <laughs> There's no gold. You're kidding. He is not kidding. The gold was removed in the year 1784 by the Franciscan friars. They used the treasure to build the missions. Why were you so hot for the map? Because this map was drawn by the hand of Hernando Cortez, which places it in the pantheon of historical documents. Big deal. It is a big deal. I have a client in upstate New York who is willing to pay for the will of Cortez a tidy sum of $400,000. $400,000 for old Will? 400,000 big ones. Nobody would pay that kind of money for a scrap of paper. One would. Nobody would. This one would. Who? Who? Jerome Davenport. Well, I must say, got to hand it to you, you outfoxed me. Oh, no, sir, no. no. That was simply my good fortune. It's a trick! No, no, it can't be. It, it, it cannot be. We had it authenticated. Did your man do the Schwarzwald flame test on it? No. Then. Then it is. It is a fake. It's a fraud. It's 
It's a, a phony. I'm sorry. I, gee, I thought we really had something. Uh, I, I think I figured it out. The, the Frenchman who, who sold it to Malcolm, the map was switched before the Bugatti left Malta. And now, sir, if I may trouble you for my money. Oh, of course, of course. Skip the, uh, the case. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to do business with a reasonable man. Wilbur, we must resume the trail. Back to Malta. Back to Malta. for upstate New York. The name is Jerome Davenport. I guess we don't need this copy anymore. Oh, yeah. Never con a con man. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, fine. Well, what's the matter? Jerome Davenport back out on the deal? Oh, no, I got a cashier's check. Well, you sure don't look like a man who just got $400,000. Well, there's a little expense off the top of that. There's a Bugatti back there, a pile of junk. The car meant a lot to you, didn't it? Hmm. Well, it's been Harry's dream since he was a child. Well, like the fellow says, you win a few, you lose a few. What you guys been up to? Oh, just figuring out a new way to cut the ice. Ice? Yeah, you know the iceberg project we're supposed to be working on? Oh, yeah. Come on, we'll show you. Okay. Nice, huh? Oh, oh yeah. it's been so exciting. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 